There will be four free response questions on the AP Precalculus exam. This video is modeled after FRQ 1. It's about composition, zeros, limits, and choosing an appropriate model. Let's pretend it's from the 2004 AP Precalculus exam. If you appreciate the content, please give it a like. Let f be an increasing function defined for all real values of x. The table gives values for f of x at selected values of x. The function g is given by g of x equals 3 log base 5 of x. A part 1. The function h is defined by h of x is equal to g of f of x, which uh, means exactly the same thing as this notation. Find the value of h at 4 as a decimal approximation or indicate that it is not defined. h at 4 means plugging in 4 for x right here. So h at 4 will equal g at f at 4. Working from the inside out, we see that f at 4 is 2. So let's substitute 2 for f at 4. We now have g at 2. This problem is calculator active, so let's use the graphing calculator to evaluate g at 2. Always reset your calculator at the beginning of a problem by hitting second plus 7, 1, 2. That's second plus 7, 1, 2. Ta-da! Fresh calculator. Hit your y equals button and let's enter g of x as y1. Remember, g of x is 3 log base 5 of x. How do you type in 3 log base 5 of x? Type in the 3, and then hit the math button, and you want to scroll up because it's near the bottom and it wraps around. Choose option A that says log base. And now we can enter the 5 and the x. Since we entered g of x as y1, evaluating g at 2 means evaluating y1 at 2. Quit to a blank screen by hitting second, quit. You can make y1 appear by hitting alpha, trace, enter, and you can evaluate y1 at 2 by putting 2 in parentheses right next to y1 and hitting enter. Always use four decimal places and never try to round. The College Board will accept three decimal places, but we have found that students often make a mistake trying to round and they lose a point needlessly. So, use four decimal places and never round. 1.2920. That's it for A Part 1. A Part 2. Find the value of F inverse at 2 or indicate that it is not defined. The College Board will ignore scratch work, but to be clear, you should probably label your scratch work as scratch work if you're going to put it on your test paper at all. To evaluate F inverse at 2, you ask yourself the question F at what is equal to 2. Looking at the chart, we see that F at 4 is equal to 2. So that's the value of f inverse at 2. B part 1. Find all real zeros of g of x as decimal approximations or indicate that there are no real zeros. The zeros of g are where g of x is equal to 0. I'm going to show you how to solve this in two ways. One method is to use the graphing calculator to solve the equation g of x is equal to 0. Since we already have g of x on y1, we just need to put 0 on y2 and find the intersection point between these. Let's look at the graph and see what we've got. Uh, this is a pretty nice graph as is. We just need this intersection point right here. So let's hit second trace option 5 for intersect. Uh, I don't see the pointer, so pro tip, hit the up arrow key, and aha, there it is. Slide over close to the point of intersection, 
and hit enter three times. Enter, enter, enter. Okay, the intersection point is x equals 1. That's the answer for b part 1, but we can also solve this by hand. To find the zeros of g, we set g equal to 0 and solve. Dividing both sides of the equation by 3 gives us the log base 5 of x is equal to 0. We can cancel out the log base 5 by dropping a base 5 on both sides of this equation. Base 5 and log base 5 cancel each other out, leaving behind x equals. 5 to the 0 power is 1. So, we get the same answer if we do it by hand. B part 2. Determine the end behavior of g as x increases without bound. Express your answer using the mathematical notation of a limit. So, let's see. The end behavior of g means the limit as x approaches. Um, since x is increasing without bound, that means the limit as x approaches infinity. Of g of x, very important to write that part. And uh, we need to look at the graph and consider what happens to the value of g as x approaches infinity. In other words, as we go to the right. We already have this typed into the calculator, so let's just look back at it. And in fact, this blue graph right here is g. As x approaches infinity, the value of g increases without bound. It just goes up and up and up. Therefore, the limit as x approaches infinity of g of x equals infinity. And that's it for B part 2. C part 1. Use the table of values of f of x to determine if f is best modeled by a linear, quadratic, exponential, or logarithmic function. A linear model will be best if there is a constant change in the output values of f of x over equal length input value intervals. Or you could say when the first differences of f of x are equal over equal length input value intervals. First of all, notice that we do have equal length input value intervals. So far, so good for linear. However, here are the changes in the output values. They are not constant. The first differences are not equal. So f of x is not linear. A quadratic model will be best if the second differences of f of x are equal over equal length input value intervals. I've shown the second differences here in red, and they are not equal either, so a quadratic model is not a good fit for f of x. An exponential model is best if the output values of f of x are proportional, in other words, change multiplicatively, over equal length input value intervals. That's exactly what we see. If you take any output value and multiply it by 2, it gives you the next output value. So, the output values are proportional, or you can say that the output values change multiplicatively. Therefore, an exponential model is a good fit for f of x. C part 2 says give a reason for your answer based on the relationship between the change in the output values of f and the change in the input values of f. So we can answer C part 1 and part 2 at the same time. We say exponential is best because the output values of f of x are proportional over equal length input value intervals. Or you could say because the output values of f of x change multiplicatively over equal length input value intervals. Make sure you specifically say of f of x right here. If you leave this out, you will not earn this point. Just to complete our notes on how to know which model is best, a logarithmic model is best if the input values of f of x are proportional over equal length output value intervals. This is exactly the reverse of what we said for exponential. 
Hey guys, don't forget to like and subscribe, but also if you found this video helpful, there's a lot more where that came from. You can click the upper link, which will take you to the whole unit playlist, or you can click the lower link, which will take you to the next video in the playlist. See you there.